Hi boys and girls, hello first graders. This is kind of exciting because this is the first lesson that's kind of aimed just at you guys. The kindergartners have a separate lesson. So we're going to talk today about big problem, small problem. Now this should be a review for most of you. If you were in first grade last year, this should be a review. We did a lot of work on big problem, small problem, and solving small problems with Kelso's choices. So hopefully this is a review. If you're a new student to us this year, you weren't here last year for kindergarten, you might want to check out the kindergarten lesson that kind of is going to go into more detail with this. So to review this though, the first thing I want you guys to remember is big problem, small problem does not mean how upset we are. A lot of people think that big problem means that we're really upset, small problem means we're not really upset, but that's not what it means. When we say big problem, small problem, or some people say big deal, little deal, what that means is if it's a big problem or a big deal, we want you to go get help from an adult. It's a big enough problem that we don't want you to try to solve it on your own. So big problem doesn't mean how angry you are. It means it's big enough that we want you to go get help from an adult. A small problem, you might be really, really upset about a small problem, but what it means is we want you to solve it on your own. Even if you're feeling upset, you're gonna take that deep breath. Maybe a lot of deep breaths, maybe you're going to take a break, whatever it is you need to do, calm yourself down, but you are still going to be the one that tries to solve it on your own without help from an adult. So remember, it's not how angry you are or how upset you get, it's whether or not you should be getting help from an adult. So if it's a big problem, that means we want you to get an adult, small problem, small deal, we want you to solve it on your own. So hopefully you guys remember that there are three things we talked about last year that make something a big problem. If someone is hurt, if something is broken, if something scary happens. Big problem, we want you to get help from an adult for all those things. So like if you're playing outside and you fall and hurt yourself, even if you think you're okay, maybe your elbow's sore, your knee's sore, you're still gonna go get an adult. We want you to go get an adult and let them know that you fell down and hurt yourself so that they can check it out. If something breaks, if you're in the classroom and you're playing with a game or a toy and that toy breaks, you're not gonna get in trouble we need that adult to know though, that's a big problem, you need to tell an adult because they might be able to fix the toy or they might need to know that they have to get something new to replace it. And the last one is if something scary happens. That one's a little bit different because what that means is if it's scary to you. You might not be scared of the same things that I'm scared of. So I might be scared of the dark. And so if we lost power suddenly, I might feel really scared. You might not. If it's scary to me, I should go get help from an adult and let them know how I feel. So big problem, someone's hurt, something's broken, something scary happens, you go get help from an adult. Everything else that happens in school, pretty much, is going to be a small problem. Which just means, even if you're feeling frustrated and upset, we want you to solve it on your own without going to the adults for help. At least, hopefully you guys remember this, two times. Have to try to solve it by yourself at least two times before you go get help from an adult. Now, there's something else that's important about this, because you guys are probably watching this at home, maybe you're watching it in the classroom, but if you're watching this at home, there may be different rules at home for what makes something a big problem and a small problem. So we've got those three, but there might be a fourth or a fifth at home, or maybe more, where the grown-ups at home want you to get them for help. So if you're watching this at home, when you're done watching this video, I really want you to stop and talk with your grown-ups about what makes something a big problem at home, where the grown-ups want you to go get them for help, and what makes something a small problem, where they want you to solve it on your own. Because school rules and home rules are often different, and you need to know both. You know the three things for at school, someone's hurt, something's broken, something scary is happening, go get an adult. Now talk with your grown-ups about what those things are at home. Maybe they're the same and maybe they're different, but it's a really good conversation to have with your grown-ups about when they want you to go get them for help and when they want you to solve it on your own. So you're not going to go talk to them, you're just going to solve it on your own. Also, we talked about this last year, another thing to review, is a big reaction or a small reaction. So when we have a small problem, we want to match it with a small reaction. If I am walking down the hall and my shoelace is untied, that is a small problem. I can solve that on my own. So a small reaction might be a sigh or, oh well, maybe I can get someone to help me if I need it. I'm going to stay very calm. I'm going to use a calm voice. You guys hopefully remember that because I said it a lot. Use a calm voice and you're going to just deal with that problem. If I was walking down the hall and my shoe was untied and I go, oh no, my shoe's untied. That would be really silly because I'm having a big reaction to a small 
problem. So we have big problem, small problem, big reaction, small reaction. If we have a small problem, we want to try to match our reaction. So if we're playing a video game, if I'm at home playing a video game, my grown-up says, okay, it's time for you to, fit, to stop and you've got to go clean your room. Is that a big problem or a small problem? Anyone hurt? Anything broken? Anything scary happening? No, so it's a small problem. I don't want to stop playing my video game because I really like video games, but that's what my grown-up asked me to do. So now, even though I might be feeling very frustrated because I almost finished playing my game and I almost beat the main bad guy, I need to have a small reaction. So I might just take a deep breath and just tell myself, okay, I, I can finish playing this game later. I need to go clean up my room. Calm voice. So big problem, small problem, big reaction, small reaction. I know that's kind of a lot to take in. Hopefully you guys remember it all. I wish there was another way to talk about this. Like, you know what would be cool is if like, if we had like a game show, like a big problem, small problem game show. All right, everybody, welcome to everyone's favorite game show, Big Problem, Small Problem, where we take the day's problems and figure out exactly how big or how small those problems are. We have our two contestants today, Mr. Rob and Ms. Nazio. Can you give a round of applause? Okay. Great. We're going to start off with the lightning round. Now, for the lightning round, I just want you to buzz in if you know whether this is a big problem where you're going to need help from an adult or a small problem that you would want to solve all on your own. Are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. Okay. Let's do this. A student near you is talking while you are trying to do your work. Big problem, small problem. Big. Ms. Ruff. Big problem! Ms. Fazio. Small problem. That was a small problem. Okay. Nobody was hurt, nothing okay. was broken, nothing scary was happening. So 50 okay. points to Sorry. Ms. Fazio. Okay, I'm going to listen better. Number two. You're playing on the playground, and you fall off the swing and really hurt your arm. Big problem or small problem? That's right. Big problem. Yeah, it is a big problem. Yeah. Big problem. Someone was hurt. Good big job, problem. good job. Excellent. 50 points apiece. Number three. You notice someone in class who is not doing their work like the teacher asked them to. Big problem or small problem? Oh, that's not him. Small problem? That is a small problem! Nicely done, small problem. Because no one's hurt, nothing's broken, nothing scary is happening. In fact, you don't, it's not really a problem at all. You just go back to doing your work. Number four, you're lined up to go to PE, and someone else comes over and cuts right in front of you in line. Big problem or small problem? Oh, I'm gonna go with this Rob. Oh, wait, no one got hurt. Small problem! Yes, it is small problem! Very good. Good job, Ms. Rob. You're solve that one all on your own. All right, the last question in the lightning round. You accidentally drop your iPad at home and the screen cracks. Big problem or small problem? Ms. Fazio? This is a hard I one. I know, that's why I didn't want to answer. Your screen has I cracked. I think it's a big problem. It is a big problem. Nice oh, one. Woo! Yes! Air high five. <laughs> Something is maybe broken. We're going to want to tell an adult about that. Mm -hmm. Excellent job on the lightning round. Okay. Good, yep. Okay, now before we move on to round two, it's time to meet our contestant. So, Miss Rob says here that you, your family owns a farm. What's it like to mm -hmm. own a farm? It is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But it's a lot of fun, too. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. And I have here in my notes that your family is trying to create a new fruit that is a cross between a rutabaga and a strawberry <laughs> called a rutabaga. <laughs> I did hear that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. What's a rutabaga like? It's crunchy but sweet. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. Crunchy but sweet. You have to look out for rutabagas <laughs> in a store near you. Miss Fazio yes. uh, says here you have a pet dog. Talk I about your dog. do. Macy. Her name is Macy and she's 12 years old. Oh. She's small and she's really, really cuddly. Oh. She needs to go to the, the uh, groomer though tomorrow. She's so kind of stinky. Does she know she's going to the groomer? She doesn't know yet. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay, and I also have here in my notes that you used to be the queen of Arendelle, but you gave up your kingdom to become a teacher here at the Ginter School. Tell us about that decision. <laughs> well, it was a tough one because I love to be the queen. Mm -hmm. Being a princess is fun too. Yes. However, I love kids and I love to be a teacher at Ginther. Excellent. And you love me. And I love yes. teaching next yes. door to Ms. Rumble. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Those are great. So now we know a little bit more about our contestants. 
And now we're going to go to the, the, the big reaction, small reaction. So for these questions, I'm going to give you a situation. And I want you to think about if it's a big problem or small problem. But also, I, don't, I want to know what kind of reaction you would have to this problem. Would you have a big reaction or a small reaction? Got it. Are you ready? Right. We're ready. I think so. OK. It's playtime, but you do not finish your work during math time. So your teacher tells you you're going to have to sit out for a few minutes to finish your math work. What kind of reaction should we have to this problem? Mr. Rob. Are you kidding me? That no. was a very big reaction. And this is, yeah, I get this wrong. Okay. All right. I guess I'll get my work done now. That's right. That is a small reaction we're looking for. That type of big reaction Next is time. not going to help at all. All right. Let's try another one. You're at home. It's time to start your work on your iPad, but you really, 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 really don't want to do your work. What kind of reaction should you have? It's Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say, mom, dad, grown up, can I just finish watching this show real quick and then get started? Oh, I like what a calm voice that was. Very good. And I'll get bonus points for Ms. Rob if you can tell me what would you do if the grown-up said, nope, you have to start your work now. Hmm. I guess I would say, okay, maybe I can watch it later. Oh, excellent. Bonus point for Ms. Rob. Woo! Yes! All right, let's yeah. put her into the lead with only two uh, questions woo, woo, remaining. Uh, okay, I guess she could be in the lead. Oh, oh. nicely done. Well done. Bodies like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You make a mistake on your work and you're feeling very upset about it. What kind of reaction should you have? Hmm. Fazio. I know I'm a little confused, but I think I can get it next time if I try a little harder. Oh, excellent. A nice small reaction. Very well done. Sometimes we all make mistakes and we're just going to make the most of it. Excellent. Got to have that positive mindset. Got to. Oh, yes. Okay. Our last question to decide who goes to the final round. Drum roll. Okay. It's time to start your work, but you don't remember the teacher's directions. Is this a big problem where you don't do anything until the teacher comes to help you, or a small problem that you think you could sound on your, solve on your own? You don't remember what you're supposed to do. Hmm. Hmm. Now we talked about this. Mm. Mr. Rob. I think this is a small problem. It is a small problem. So, who could you ask for help instead of the teacher? Hmm. Could probably look around the room and see if there was an example to look at. Excellent. Very good. All right, Miss Rob, that puts you in the lead. So you're going to go to our final round. I'm sorry, Miss Rob. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I mean, excellent. I like it when my friends win. Oh, that's great. And, and you do have, she's so nice. We do have the home version of Small Problem, Big Problem for you to take home to play with oh, your friends. Oh, yes. Macy will love playing that. <laughs> All right, Miss Brown. Yes. Okay. This is oh, for wow. the grand prize. Okay. okay. Your question. Mm -hmm. How many times should you try to solve a small problem all on your own before you go and get help from an adult. So you have a small problem. How many different times or different ways you have to try to solve it on your own before you go get help from an adult? I actually remember this from one of your other lessons. Yes. The answer is two times. Two, oh, I'm sorry, two is wrong. You do not win the grand prize. Oh, well, maybe next time. Oh, that was a trick question. <laughs> That's right, Miss Rob. You've won a year's supply of Temptations cat treats, the preferred cat treat of everyone's favorite cat, Fiona. Enjoy the crunchy goodness all throughout the year of that yummy, tasty cat treat. Temptations, enjoy. Oh, okay. 
Ew. Okay. I don't want them. No? No cat treats? I thought it was going to be like a new car. Oh. Well, Fiona is our charge of our prizes, and she thought cat treats were the way to go. I'm definitely having my agent contact Fiona's agent after this broadcast. Fair enough. <laughs> all right, that's all the time that we have here on Big Girl and Small Problem. Tune in next week. We'll have some new contestants. We thank you. And it's probably on this job. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. All right. You know, on second thought, I'm not sure a big problem, small problem game show is such a good idea. But hopefully you guys get the idea. Remember, talk with your grown-ups at home. The things that make something a big problem at school might be different than at home. Really, really want you guys to talk to your grown-ups at home about when you should be going to get them for help and when you should be trying to solve that stuff on your own. So I hope you guys remember all that. Have fun teaching your grown-ups about it. And I will see you next time.